So if you're one of the few people who played Redneck Rampage back in the day, then chances are you also played the sequels slash expansion packs. These were released within a year of one another, and these are Suck and Grits on Route 66 and Redneck Rampage Rides Again. It's hard to find much information on these titles online, but if memory serves, Route 66 was released first, with Rides Again shortly after. Jackalope Energy is just as good the second day. Suck and Grits on Route 66 doesn't have a story per se, more so it's just a series of highly entertaining and varied levels, overall feeling more like a map pack than an actual sequel. Redneck Rampage Rides Again, however, is a lot more along the lines of a sequel, released in 1998 and developed again by Yatrix Entertainment. It follows the journey of Leonard, who the player controls, and Bubba, as they move through swamps and brothels to reach their hometown of Hickston. Both these games have the same tongue-in-cheek attitude and tone from their predecessor, offering up all manner of white trash cliches as you explore the game's dozen or so levels, often finishing them off by smacking your old chum Bubba in the face with your crowbar. <laughs> I'm over here, Leonard! In Route 66, you'll go through an RV and Bigfoot convention, the world's biggest flea market, and an oddities museum. Whilst in Rides Again, you'll explore a fictionalized version of Elvis's hometown, referred to as Disgraceland in the game, ride a machine gun equipped Harley through a motocross track, and also bust out of jail in El Paso. You can't say this shit ain't original. Once again, the voice acting and just the sound in general is really top notch with the guy who does Leonard's voice stealing the show. <laughs> Double battered and big deep ride. Familiar enemies also make a return, but it's with rides again where there's a few new additions. Jackalopes, bikies armed with shotguns, and what I assume is a schoolgirl wearing a cheerleader's outfit that throws fiery batons and cartwheels into you for a melee attack. Other than that, it's just the same revolver or shotgun type enemy over and over. I think the plot from the first game was that the aliens abducted three or four people from Earth and just cloned them over and over. This explains why you only see the same few enemy types throughout the entire game. Overall, the new enemy types may look and sound different, but they really just function the same. You know, basically becoming aware of your presence, then just trying to kill you. The lineup of weapons in both games is largely the same, with the only new addition being an alternate fire mode for the dynamite launcher, where there's now a chicken propped on the end of the stick, somehow allowing the dynamite to home in on its target. I'm not exactly sure what the science is behind something like that, but then again, this is the same game where there's enemies made from human feces, so I guess you just kind of got to run with it. But these are still some of the most original weapons you're going to see in a shooting game, and they're all really good fun to use. Also, thankfully this time around, ammo is in much more plentiful supply. Health in Redneck Rampage is managed through food and alcohol items, which both have different effects and their own respective meters on the heads-up display. Eating too much food causes Leonard to fart all the time, whilst drinking too much booze gets him drunk. <laughs> Using these items effectively is a combination of mixing the two together to avoid getting too plastered. Overall, both of these games are really fun to play, though I did find myself enjoying Route 66 a lot more, mostly because it has a lot more enemy placements in each level, forcing you into shootouts more often. Sometimes a few of the areas in Rides Again can seem a little bit barren, and you've often got an abundance of ammo, but no one to use it all on. On that note though, the problems that affect one game affect the other. Now, I had some big issues with a lot of things in the first Redneck Rampage game. Ammo was something I always thought was on short supply, and I just found the level design and general shooting to be really sloppy and unrefined. Levels would often revolve around just looking in random places for a key to unlock the next area. And whilst rides again in Route 66 do kind of use the same formula, I am happy to say it is a lot more streamlined. I rarely found myself lost and unsure where to go next, most often than not the key for a locked door was usually in the near vicinity, and just in general everything flowed a lot better. Rides Again does require a lot of switch flipping though, which can be a bit confusing. You know, you flip a switch, backtrack a bit and you find the door it opens. Flip another switch, backtrack again, etc. It's not terribly convoluted and if you are paying attention to the level design you should recall where the hell you're supposed to go, but it does slow the pace down a bit. <laughs> But compared to the downright muddled level design of the first game, this is a welcome breath of fresh air, and in both of these sequels, your progression rarely involves large amounts of doubling back. In Rides Again, some of the more opened up levels are pretty damn big in size, and some even offer the player either a motorbike or airboat to get across large areas much quicker. The controls for these aren't perfect though, I mean, they're kinda horrible, mostly because you can't reverse, and if you like crash into a wall for instance, you're pretty much a sitting duck. 
but mostly it works and it's a really early example of controllable vehicles in FPS games. Both of these were also pretty damn good looking games for the time. Considering the fact that it runs on the build engine, it's amazing the amount of detail they've packed into some of the levels, especially the interior environments. Texture quality still holds up even 16 odd years later and the cartoonish style of enemies and the other effects is still very appealing. Drinking booze, blowing shit up and cussing is pretty much the game in a nutshell and its originality and charm still shines through. That gal's got a temper like a wet horse. My main issues with the game once again stem from the shooting mechanics. It just feels loose. I don't know how else to define it. It's not bad, but it's just not that good. There's still lots of instances where explosions will just seem to do absolutely no damage, or times where, you know, a launched dynamite stick will just go straight through an enemy. There's also some really weird shit going on with enemies in general. I mean, sometimes you can stand 10 feet away from them and they seem unable to land a single shot. But then other times you can be across the other side of a level and they're able to snipe you with a double barreled shotgun and hit dead on target every single time. The alien enemies are just total assholes and can kill you practically instantly. Most of the time I just find myself avoiding them entirely, which sucks because I really do genuinely enjoy killing things in games like this. But fighting an enemy that can glitch its attacks through walls and hit you with its unfairly accurate projectiles just isn't that much fun. When you get some of the bigger guns in the game, taking these guys on ain't all that bad, but they really do soak up a lot of damage and can kill you way too easily, so it does often feel quite unbalanced. I mean, those female vixen thingies you go up against are definitely the most annoying and have a machine gun built into their boobs that just insta-kills you. Combine that with their teleporting ability and it's a real pain in the ass. Like I said, it's just loose, there's not really any consistency to any of it, and it still stands out as the weakest element in the game, which for a shooter, isn't what you want. One shithead at a time. Problems aside, I still consider Redneck Rampage to be a very interesting and original shooting game that I guess should ultimately be explored by FPS fans. The superior level design makes it much better than the original game, even if the fundamental problems with the shooting are still somewhat existent. The version sold on goodoldgames.com comes with the original and the other expansion packs and is all set up to run in DOSBox. Now this is by far the best version of the game out there at the moment, short of a full HD release. I should say it's lacking the CD soundtrack, but at the moment it's the best bang for the buck. I would say that Redneck Rampage Rides Again and Route 66 kind of trumps the first game in every single way. And whilst I may not have too much love for Redneck Rampage in general, I can't deny that both of these games really tick the boxes where it matters most. Jack a f lope.